All right, what is up, guys? Welcome to the brand new Freaktography podcast and my very first ever episode. This podcast has been a long time coming. It's actually been in the works since my first episode on the Chasing Vandos podcast with my friend Greg Abandon. So many of you guys reached out to me after that episode and you've told me that I've got to start my own show. So this podcast is not all about me. It's a place for me to swap stories with like-minded people, other explorers, adventurers, photographers, and more to bring these people and their stories to you in my own unique way. Which brings us to today's guest and my very first guest on the podcast. Let's jump right in. Okay, guys, here we go. The very, very first photography podcast with the one and only my good friend, the UBC Urbex Carlo, Carlo Pelotza. Here he is. Guys, I've known Carlo Pelotza since 2017 as a very good friend. It's Carlo who got me to take off the gas mask, to come out from behind the camera, get in front of the camera, start doing YouTube. Now here we are several years later. We're good friends. And now we're going to chat with Carlo Pelotza, my very first podcast guest. What's up, UBC? Absolutely nothing. Glad to be here for you. Good. I'm glad you could be my first guest. Couldn't think of anybody I'd rather have. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Carlo Pelotza? Oh, wow. I mean, I already know everything there is to know, <laughs> but let's tell the people what you want them to know. So what got me into exploring was I was at work one day and I actually got hurt. And it, I don't even remember how bad I got hurt. I was off of work for a good eight months because of an injury. Wow. And I think it was my lower back, if I'm not mistaken. And I was sitting on the couch, you know what I mean? Doing my rehab, all that kind of stuff. And I was watching a ton of people. Like I already watched a lot of people like exploring with Josh and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm rehabbing. I'm like, this looks cool. I took more, I took it more serious. I was watching it more. And I said to myself, I'm like, why don't I get on off my feet and maybe try this myself? So I did do, I, I started off, I was, it was really bad when I first started, but went back to work. I started doing my rehab. I was back at work. I was starting to do this on the side maybe on the weekends or the odd times during the week, I'd go out, film some stuff, do some pictures. And that's how I actually got into it. Cause I got hurt from my other job. Right. And I took it more serious. I'm like looking at these guys doing it. I'm like, I can do this. Why can't I do this on the side and do it for fun? So that's technically how I got into it. Cause I got hurt out of my other job. So, All right. And, uh, so you worked another job and you got into exploring, you, you, you discovered YouTube and then you decided to take that as your as your career. Because I remember the first time we did a road trip together, I said, so Carla, what do you do for a living? And your answer was YouTube. So yes. you decided to take the jump to actually go to YouTube as your job. I did. And how, how so th- did that work out well for you? It did because at my last job, like I was making good money, but there was no room for advancement, right? And with YouTube, and I guess at my first video, it kind of blew up, took off. I was making more money on YouTube than my actual job. So, and I thought to myself, I'm like, you know, work five days, you know, eight to 12 hours a day, Mm -hmm. or go out and do maybe one or two days a week and make the same kind of money, if not more. And I was making more at the time. So I'm like, I'm just going to dump my job and go full-time YouTube, go full steam at it. And I did. And I, I did pretty good. I'm doing pretty good for myself too. So that's pretty awesome. So let's go back to the old days. I got your YouTube channel up right here. Oh now, God. There's a couple of videos that I'm a little bit disappointed with. Uh, <laughs> New kids on the block backstreet boys tour uh, in Hamilton, Ontario. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 219 views. <laughs> and then, okay. So then we got uh, Burlington, Ontario, Spencer Smith park waterfront, high winds and waves. October 3rd, 2015. Okay, so then we've got some jokes here. We've got some silly string pranks that you played on friends. And here we go. Your first abandoned video is Century Manor. Yeah. Abandoned at St. Asylum seven years ago. So talk about your experience filming Century Manor. How many times have you been there? Tell me about your first time. First time I went there, I was – I was excited to go look at it because at the time, I think a lot of local explorers have already hit that place a lot, I think. And I'm like, this looks cool. I want to do it. And 
I just, when I got there, I met about seven or eight people there that were trying to get in and they had opened the door for me and none of them wanted to go in. So when I drove by, they were kind of coming up to me like, oh, are you coming here to see Century Man? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to see if I can get in. They're like, oh, we got it open, but we don't, none of us want to go in. So I brought my camera in. They all followed me as, I was, as if I was already a big YouTuber and an ex- urban explorer. And I'm just going in there thinking, I don't know what I'm going to film. If you look at the video, I'm filming the floor, I'm walking around and I'm like, I don't even know how to film. <laughs> because of all the people behind me, and I had the flashlights and all that kind of gear. It yeah. was really fun for the first time exploring because at the end of the day, my first explore was Century Manor on YouTube. It yep. wasn't my first actual video that I filmed, but on right. YouTube, it was the one I uploaded first. Okay, I so, see. And so when you started, were you just doing videos or were you doing pictures too? Uh, I was only doing video. Right, only so you started video. for the purposes of doing YouTube and videos, right? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I didn't, get, I, didn't, I didn't get into pictures until later, which I'll get into later, who got me into pictures and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's talk a little bit about your style. Oh, here's a, here's a good one. So one of the very first times you and I ever talked was the infamous Burlington Cat Lady House, and you needed some pictures and some content to borrow for your video. I had never heard of you before. <laughs> you reached out to me, and you asked me if you could use some of my footage for a video at the Cat Lady House. So you did the Cat Lady House a couple of times. That video's done pretty well. Thirty three thousand yeah. views. It, it did. It was that was a, a very cool experience to be there. And then, like I said, like I asked you because you're one of the first guys that I followed as a photographer. Like you were doing pictures only. You weren't doing YouTube at the time. No. And I'm like, okay. Because so what I did is I tried to find local areas of local explorers that only did pictures, and I and I reached out to you. You're one of the guys. Yeah. And I said I want to do a video here, but I want. You were there way, way, way before I even got to that place. And you had pictures of it being untouched where when I got to it, it was destroyed. Yeah. So it was kind of that, – that collaboration for me was kind of cool because you got to see your perspective and mine. Like right. the before and after type thing. So yeah. that's the why – The Cassidy House would have been your first popular video then because it's got 33,000 views. Um, your Century Manor has 3,000. Uh, a, a school has uh, almost 2,000. And then, yeah, then you get to the Cat Lady House and you got 33,000 views. So it's almost like that was your first uh, your first really big video. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. That was a long time ago. I can't remember, but I yeah, think it yeah, was. Yeah, for sure. All right, so so let's talk about your your style, your style of filming on YouTube. So you started out filming with a, with a potato, pointing your camera at the ground, not really paying attention. Then you get into filming an intro, narrating, speaking. So tell me how you developed your style as a YouTuber. Well, the thing was, I watched guys like Exploring with Josh and uh, Adam Nawu. Those are the two get-go guys. They were the OG guys. And anyone who does band and stuff knows who those guys are. And if you don't, you're living under a rock. So, and then I was looking at local explorers. At the time, there was only a couple people doing local and I'm not going to say any of their names, but they were filming and not showing their face. Right. And I was watching stuff like that, and I'm like, they're not getting views. They're not getting recognized as much because they're not showing their face. Exploring with Josh was showing his face. He'd been very, like, um, excited about the stuff, and you could see his expression, where the other guys, you couldn't. So I said, right. I'm going to jump right into this. And I think my first couple of videos, I don't really show my face either. And I figured that out. I'm like, you have to show your face. You have to show your expression so people see how excited you get. Or if you're disgusted with places, they want to see that reaction. They don't want to see your non-facial expression when you're not showing the camera. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I yeah. figured when I start off, when I started getting more into it seriously, I, I started showing my face, talking about stuff and, you know, kind of going like that way. Like how exploring right. Josh was or Adam the Woo type thing. So Yeah. So then uh, you've also collaborated a lot, a lot and become good friends with Mo Sarji. Did uh, did Mo help uh, mold your sort of style? How did he help you? He taught me a lot of stuff behind the scenes, like how to uh, make my videos grow bigger and all that kind of stuff. I still kept my style, mm-hmm. uh, but he did tell me stuff to go along the way, how to get bigger. And guys like other uh, explorers, like Exploring with Josh kind of helped me too, right? Like yep. Those are the two biggest guys that I met. Exploring with Josh was the first guy, and Mo was uh, one of the – Set third or fourth I met type thing. So um, I everything I get from them, I, I learn and I kind of grow myself type thing. So Cool. Okay, so looking at your YouTube channel, and for those that are listening, it's uh, the Cyber Realm on YouTube. You just look up Carlo Pelosa to follow him on YouTube. So your most watched video, this blows my mind. This house was an absolute dump. 
It was 1.7 million views for the abandoned dealer's 1970s weird looking house with indoor pool <laughs> and sauna. <laughs> yeah. That's quite the naming convention you've got going on there. How do you think that video took off? To be honest, I have no idea. I, it was, like you said, it was a dump. And uh, I, I have no explanation, no answer for that, why that video took off, to be honest. <laughs> no it's crazy, right? And then, yeah, like I filmed that same place and I pretty much filmed it the same way as you did. And I didn't even get near a million views on my video. All right, so we've looked at your YouTube channel. We figured out how you got to where you are. Let's talk about some of your favorite explorers over the years. You've been doing this for quite a few years since at least what? When did you start? Well, my first videos were what seven years ago posted. So I started probably about nine years ago because I, yeah. I tried to when I first started. I bought, I stockpiled a lot of my videos before I posted them. That's why I, when I told you earlier, Century Man wasn't the first video I actually shot. Right. But, I saw a a lot because I wanted to do maybe one a week, one every two weeks, kind of to see how it started off. Yeah. And one of my hard drives got corrupted. I lost two years worth of stuff. So I had to restart and yeah. Damn. All right. So let's talk about what are some of your favorite explorers, places that you've been to. I think Splat a lot was one of my favorite because it was just such a cool idea, that whole place. Um, there was a, a, mansion in the, a mansion in the woods and I know you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say where it is. That was very like nostalgic, very pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I think Mafia Mansion was one of the things, and we found that together. Like, yeah, uh, and we had a lot of good times in that. Me, you, and Rhythm Rider. Yeah, we'll get into yeah. that story time because we held that thing for such a long time, and we had pizza parties in there. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and one video that I really enjoyed that I still never have posted was Prudem's Landing. In St. Catharines, it is. Yeah, yeah. I pull. I filmed that video the day before it caught fire, and this is the first time I, I'm telling people on on live or camera. Right. I filmed it, and then when I found out it burnt the next day down and they demolished it, I was afraid to post that video because I didn't want any point fin fingers pointed at me saying, "Oh my God, he was one of the last guys in there." Because I really <laughs> was. I was there until six at night, and then the next morning we heard in the news that it caught fire, and I'm like. Do I post this video or do I not? Never yeah. posted it. I still have all the footage. Maybe one day I'll, I'll post it, but that was a cool explore to me. So I think you made the right call there, but I think it's about good time for you to put that up. It's been a yeah. while. Yeah, yeah. So who are some of your favorite uh, YouTubers and explorers who you uh, who you like to follow, who might give you inspiration or who get you excited about you know keeping going? Um. Well, obviously, Explore with Josh is someone I follow and. The day I met him, like, I was like a kid in a candy store. Like, so Josh was one of the biggest guys I had followed. And um, I uploaded, I think it was the, the drug dealer mansion. Everyone knows where it is. It's on Keel. It was on Keel Street. It's demolished now, so I can say yeah, that. Yeah, grow up. Yeah, yeah. The grow up mansion. And there's so much different stories about that place. I had the actual guy who sold it to the people who were doing the grow up. And I know the story was a grow up. It was an illegal grow up. I know mm -hmm. that. So anyways, yeah. <laughs> so that was like where I first met Josh. Okay. I'll get into the story about that uh, mansion later. Sure. But I posted that video story, whatever it was. And I messaged Josh because he was in town in Toronto at Buffer, which is VidCon for Canada. So I messaged him. I'm like, yo, I can show you a couple spots. And my assumption is he's seen my channel. He's seen the grow up for me was going very well. Mm -hmm. And I knew if I brought him, it'd go super viral for him. And to this day, that was one of his best videos because he got like 12 million views on it wow. instantly when he uploaded it. Mm -hmm. So guys like that, yeah, like meeting Josh was kind of cool. I met guys like Mo Sarji. Uh, Mo reached out to me. Uh, same thing with the grow up mansion. Um I met a, a ton of big guys. Like, you know, and as you grow bigger on YouTube, you meet all these bigger guys. So I met guys like Josh, which is inspire, uh, inspiring. Joe and uh, Mo Sarji inspires me. I met guys like Stromedy. I met guys like Kyle McGran. We're good friends too. Um, I met Jay Station, which, you know, you know, he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a nice guy to me. He was never bad to me. And yeah. whatever happened with him on YouTube, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Nice yeah. guy to me. I, I can't say anything bad about him. Right. And I met all the other guys like 
in Mo's crew, like uh, all those worlds. I met guys like Omar Gosh TV. Every one of those guys inspire me in, in different ways to make myself better. So there was this one time when uh, we were exploring together and uh, you didn't know that I was there. And we did an abandoned funeral home. And oh, funeral home, okay. <laughs> so yeah. we set this up. Rhythm Writer and I set this up perfectly. <laughs> and I get there 20 minutes before you guys. He tells you guys that I'm running late. I yep. get into this funeral home, set up my cameras, and I put myself in a coffin. Take me through what happened next. <laughs> So I'm sitting there, I'm psyching myself up. I didn't think you were there. And you see, you're probably going to show a clip anyway, but and I'm psyching myself up in my video saying, if someone was in here, I'd probably pee my pants or I'd die. Not knowing you were in the thing that I was actually coming up to. And it didn't clue into me that there was a GoPro on the table. I didn't notice until after that the GoPro was on the table and there was another camera behind me. It didn't clue into me that they were there. It, it didn't think nothing of it. As I open it, you literally scared the bejeebies out of me and I... Oh my God. Cry. <laughs> what the f You actually floated. <laughs> I'm gonna show the video for the people watching on YouTube that your legs actually lifted and floated as you screamed and jumped backwards. <laughs> That's gonna I go down as one of my favorite things I've ever done. <laughs> All right. So we're all over the place, guys. And so this is, for those that are listening, this is obviously my very first podcast interview. I have no structure. We're just shooting the breeze. We're going to just go with it and see what we talk about. So we talked about how Carlo got started on YouTube with urban exploring and abandoned places. You've also done a couple of other things. You've done stuff like pranks. You've done some challenges. So what are some of the other things that you've tried that work because obviously you're trying to build your your brand build yourself up on youtube with things that work so outside of the exploring stuff what else do you like to do for your youtube channel that you think is going to help help grow your channel and get you somewhere well i'm leaning towards right now going towards like vlogs uh travel vlogs food reviews uh car stuff like car vlogs uh the pranks i think have died out I missed that train when I was starting them. I thought it would be just for fun. And I didn't do them because I was jumping on the bandwagon. I did them because it was my friends. And I could prank them type thing. Right. So, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards that stuff too with the abandon. But yeah. So didn't you tell me you got caught once dumpster diving? I did. I Oh, yeah, I did. I, I never released that video. <laughs> it was funny because I'm sitting there. I was actually in Burlington somewhere. I'm not going to mention where. Yeah. There's a bigger store, and I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, I'm going to the dumpster. I'm feel I have a, a camera guy with me, hold the camera with me, <laughs> and we're going to the dumpster. A cop pot drives by me, and I'm like, I look over. I'm like, he's not coming over. Continue going. I'm sitting literally in the dumpster, digging through the stuff. My camera guy's outside the dumpster filming me. He looks back as I'm digging down deep. He's like, the, the cop is coming right now. He's got the lights on. I look up, and I'm like, oh my god. So, and I'm sitting here. I'm like, here we go. Another thing, another problem. So, he's so, like, for, well, so for those listening that don't know, what is dumpster diving? Dumpster diving is where you go in behind a store. They throw stuff out. When they throw stuff out, it's all game. There's no rules that you cannot go retrieve that stuff, right? Right. So I, and I watched, I think it was actually Omar Gosh who I started watching doing dumpster diving. That's what kind of got me the idea. Uh -huh. And yeah, when the cop came to us, he's like, uh, so what are you guys doing? I'm like, oh, we're just filming a video of dumpster diving. Oh, that, that's pretty cool. Are, are you breaking into this place? He asked me. I'm like, what? I'm like, no, 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 no. I can show you all the footage. It's me sitting in front of the dumpster talking, kind of explaining what I'm doing in my video. And I said to him, you could see it. Yeah, I have nothing to hide. And I never do. Whenever I get caught from police, I never have anything to hide. I show them my footage if they need it. Yeah. And I showed it to him. He let me go. He's like, oh, that's kind of cool. Just uh, be safe. And he went on his way. So speaking of getting caught, I feel like you get caught a lot. <laughs> I do. I do. Why do you think that is? Bad luck? <laughs> it's a bit of everything, right? Yeah. I make mistakes sometimes, I'll be honest. Yeah. And sometimes it's just, it's bad luck. Yeah, yeah. Any urban explorer at some point will get caught. There's no totally. inevitable, you cannot stop that. But when you do get caught, you have to be nice to the police, be respected, so they're not thinking you're some a-hole. You know what I mean? It's, totally, it goes yeah. a long way when you're respect respectful to them. Yeah. So, so you touched on your car vlogs and so I want to back up a little bit. And so 
you were going full steam ahead on YouTube. You were growing like crazy. You were getting crazy views, lots of followers. All of a sudden, you hit that 100,000 subscriber milestone. You get that plaque in the mail. You're super excited. You're very proud of yourself. And then UBC falls off the map. Stopped posting. Stopped uploading. You fell off social media. What happened? Well, I'm not going to get too much into details. Obviously, I've told you before. I've told some of my close friends. I did end up getting really sick. Uh, to the point where I couldn't even go out anymore. And it was hard. I was like, it, I don't know. I just, without getting too much into detail, I don't want to give it away because I don't need this to be out there at any point or I don't want to, you know, get into details. Only my close friends know, but obviously you know, but it just, it was hard for me to even get out. I just, I was struggling with a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and with being sick, it, I don't know. It's, I, I can't put into words how I was, but mentally I was way off. Uh, physically I was way off everything. It was draining. And then I had to do my surgeries. I had two surgeries mm -hmm. and the first surgery took me by surprise. And one thing I will say in the, the surgery, the first surgery, I wasn't expecting what the doctors were going to tell me when I got out. And one thing I will say that there was a possibility I might not have got out of the surgery. Right. So, and I told you that before, and it's not something I wanted to explain to people. And I'm, I'll say it to you right now. So to, I'll show the crowd, uh, the, the viewers. I honestly thought I wasn't going to make it out of the surgery. And I was very scared when yeah. they told me that because I did not know that going into it. So it was kind of like a 50, 50 surgery type for me to kind of get yeah. out. And then I was hoping I'd get better. I was in the recovery state. It took me six months to recover. That's why it's a long recovery. Long recovery time because yeah. obviously I'm not the fittest person either. So mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's, it is what it is. And then later down the road, they told me I had to go back in for a second surgery because it wasn't corrected, whatever they had to do. Yeah. And at that point, I physically stopped everything on YouTube, you, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Because I knew going into the second one what I knew from the first one. It was a 50-50 flip. Right. And my, at that time, my emotions were so bad. I was literally in tears with my family. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, I said, and it's kind of hard for me to even say this. I'm like, what happens knowing what I know? What if I don't come out of the surgery now? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think I stopped talking to you guys for a while just because – Everything. Yeah, you just dropped off the map. Because I, I kind of wanted to fall off of YouTube for a little bit because the chance of me not coming out of the surgery, I'd already fallen off. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't have, people I don't think would have noticed me gone. At least I don't think they would have. Nah, I would have. <laughs> yeah. But people on YouTube that don't know, like follow me on right. my social media, would have never noticed. And right. that's what I was hoping for. And I, I was taking that precaution that if I didn't come out of the surgery, I'd fall off and no one would know. Right, so. right. But then everything got out, got okay. You, you healed. I remember uh, we went out. You were right back in full force. Once you were fully, that second surgery worked, fully recovered, and you're you're 100 percent now, right? Yes. Good. Good. It's a slow comeback. I'm taking yeah. my time coming back. Uh, I don't need to rush it. You know what I mean? It is what it is. So. Yeah, and so your your posting schedule not quite what it used to be but uh you're you're still starting to post but getting away from the abandoned stuff so you went out and you bought yourself a really fancy car and then yeah. you went out and you bought yourself another really fancy car and now you're working on these car vlogs so let's talk a little bit about your cars what are these two cars that you've got and what are your plans for them actually i have three cars second three. car I haven't, I haven't posted and it's funny it's ironic how the second car is but from a 100k video I ended up buying a Nissan Skyline R34 GTR. So, and I bought that because I like the Fast and Furious movie franchise. Paul Walker is an animal. I love his cars. And I said, I got to have this car. So I ended up buying it, throwing it on my 100K video. But I've had the absolute worst luck with this car. It's an amazing machine. Worst luck for it for me. I just, I just it's just a bad car for me. Yeah. But 
That's one of the cars I have. Okay. And because I do abandoned stuff, the second car I'm not going to reveal on your podcast because I haven't even revealed it on my channel yet. Okay. All right. All I know is I bought an abandoned car, right? And the car was sitting for eight years, right? So I figure, okay, I'm going to buy this car, fix it up, make it nice. This was an absolute nightmare, this car. I bought the car. I fixed it up. I had to take the motor apart at least twice. Yeah. And I had more money into repairs than the car I bought for. You know what I mean? Right. So it, yeah. it's a lot. And it's a fun car. It's another, all, Every car I have is all twin turbo cars, all wheel drive stuff. So this is a twin turbo all wheel drive car. I can't tell you what it is. I think I might have told you off camera, but. You have it. Yo, I, this is the first time hearing about it. Really? I'll yeah. send you some laughter, but it's nothing crazy. It's a, it's a fun car. It's a nostalgic car. That's all I'm going to say about it. All right. And I said, when I'm ready to uh, reveal the video, I, I will. But, and then fast forward, I just bought another big daddy car. I've teased on my Instagram what it is. And I'm going to actually tell you what it is on my, on your podcast. Cause you'll probably get it to release it before I actually release my video. Okay. I ended up buying a Toyota Supra Mark IV, which is another Paul Walker car from Fast and Furious. If you remember in part one, he drove that orange car. That's the exact car I bought. Okay. But there's a twist with this car. Mm -hmm. This is a car that's been fully restored, fully built. This is probably the fastest car I've ever owned. Wow. It's, I, I can't say how fast it is because there are people, close friends of mine, that want to race me. I don't want to give it away because I'm going to beat them. I'm going to beat a lot of guys. And I'm going to show them that V6s can smoke V8s. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> so we can look forward to some pretty cool uh, automotive, automobile car vlog content on your YouTube channel and on your social media channels. Plus the, the usual abandoned stuff. Plus yeah. maybe some restaurant reviews. A little bit of everything. Kind of all over the place. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. You got to right. expand. I wanted to expand and just di bring different content to my viewers, not just the same abandoned stuff, even though abandoned is what got me to my 100K mark. Right. You know what I mean? I want to yeah. expand. I want to do different things and just in general, bring new right. content to the channel. That's all I want to do. All right. So we've been all over the map on the last half hour together. We have we could talk for hours. I know we could, but the, there's a couple of experiences that you and I have had that would be great to talk about. We could talk about going into the mental asylum and spending the night and getting caught. But I think we should talk about the mafia mansion and the three ply mafia, how we discovered that place. What a blast that was. It was Christmas time. What? 2016. I know 2017. It was Christmas 2017. We were at your house watching the UFC, you, me and rhythm rider having a three ply party. And we decided to go out and check out this abandoned mansion that you and I both knew about. I don't know if Ridden Ryder knew about it. And <clears throat> someone had told you about it. I had checked on it in the past. It was in Burlington, Ontario, actually in Aldershot. And we went out in your minivan, went for a drive. And uh, you guys parked out front. I ran around the back. I opened the sliding door and I'm in. I'm like, wow, this is a pretty nice place. Until I go to the basement and I find this big round red sexy swinger room with sexy red curtains red couches a big metal palm tree in the middle i pop off a couple of pictures <laughs> we park the car and we're in now we found this place man let's talk about the mafia mansion oh that was a crazy place as soon as we found it it was like i, I think we all agreed we keep this to ourselves for a little bit because once you know, if the explorers find it, it's going to be every Joe Blow hitting the spot instantly. So we kept it to ourselves for a little bit. And we go there, take some, we took, I don't even know how many pictures we took. We took in the thousands between us three. Yeah. And we'd go there every time we'd have, we'd bring Little Caesars. That would be the three-ply mafia uh, trademark. We'd go to Little Caesars, yeah. get crazy bread. Yeah. Um, you guys would maybe drink a beer or two. I'd drink a Coke or something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it was always fun because we'd always go there. It was like a relaxed spot type thing. Yeah, I remember the, the first time we went, we were so nervous because we had no idea of – we had the first ones in. We had no intel. So I, would, I stood at the front window, and I looked out the window while you guys explored and took pictures and filmed. 
Then yeah. one of you would tip would trade with me so I could go. Once we got that first night done, we probably stayed for a couple of hours, got that first night done, and we were like, we got to come back. So then it was probably like the next day. We went back during the day, and we, we still watched out front because we still didn't know. But we went back, checked it out during the day, and uh, we decided to say in our posts that we drove for like four hours to get here. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we said, let's say we did an overnight challenge. So yeah. we went one night and we filmed and then we went back the next day saying it was the overnight challenge. But what ruined that overnight challenge was that the first night we went, you had a beard. <laughs> <laughs> then the, when the next day we went, you shaved your freaking beard. <laughs> yeah, I remember you guys, you guys make me never forget that. I don't know if anybody noticed it, but the overnight challenge where Carlo Pelota shaves his beard off in the abandoned mansion. <laughs> Well, we could have just said that shaved in the thing. Wasn't there working water at the time or no? There was, there was, I think there was working water because there was still water in the pool. So I think that there probably was. Um, so anyways, we all decided no exterior photos. Nobody's going to know where this is. We keep it only between us. Sure yeah. enough, you know, a couple of people here and there find out about it. But then wh where the alleged mistake was, was that we all had posted uh, pictures and video showing out the back windows yeah. that showed the bay ha going towards Hamilton and the industrial side of Hamilton. And then there's this guy, we're not going to name him, but he went out and made an entire video about how he found our mafia mansion with our hints that we allegedly had left. Now, I don't know how much truth there is to that video that he put up, that he spent that much time and that that picture out the back gave it away because there's a lot of water in Ontario and there's a lot of in places with industrial uh, factories across yeah. the water. I don't know if somebody tipped them off, whatever the case may be, but it did end up getting out there and then everybody had it. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, like I, I know who the person is, he could have found it on his own because mm -hmm. if he did make that mistake, it's possible because a lot of the explorers nowadays, they only need a picture to find a spot. Yeah. So I always thought someone leaked it. I, I truly thought that was it, but you know what I mean? He's found, that person has found some really good spots. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I got to give him some credit. You know, we didn't see eye to eye at the first time. And I think yeah. we're on good terms now yeah. where yeah. we can message each other type thing, mm -hmm. but we don't have any beef. I, at least I don't think so, but I, I give him credit if he did find it, but, I, but then I after, would say if yeah. he did find it the way he did find it, good for him. Cause that's the name of the game. It takes yeah. to putting in the work, putting in the time in Google maps. And if he did it, then massive credit to him for finding that. But we kept that secret for a pretty long time until he got out it, there. I think we kept it on the, on the download for at least a year. Maybe it was a about long. a year. Yeah, it was our it was our house for at least a year, <laughs> and everyone was messaging you, to, you and Rhythm Rider. No one messaged me about it, really, because <laughs> everyone thought it was my, my find. Right, uh, right. I knew about the house a year prior to it, but I didn't know what was in it. Right, and when when, when we all went together, you were, you were technically the first person to walk in the house. Mm -hmm. so, I didn't know what we were walking into, even though, because I didn't really want to explore a lot of Burlington houses yeah. on my own because I don't like exploring my city houses. There's the odd one that I did, but yeah, this one just yeah. kind of, it seemed red flaggy to me, but yeah. Well, that was a good one. And I think we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the three ply mafia. We do need to get together. It's been way too long since the three of us have been together. The story of the three ply mafia is yourself. Rhythm Rider, me, and well, and D Dog was there as well. Do this abandoned insane asylum. And we went and spent the night, and everybody brought sleeping bags and hammocks and pillows, the things to be comfortable. UBC brought three ply toilet paper. <laughs> Instead of having a mattress and a comfortable bed, he took rolls of three ply toilet paper and made a UBC shaped mattress out of toilet paper so he could sleep on it. <laughs> Hence the beginning of what we would come to be known as the three ply mafia, you, me, Rhythm Rider, and honorary 
uh, D Dog as an honorary member since he was there when it happened. <laughs> no, I gotta say something on that. I gotta defend myself. Nobody okay. told me we were sleeping in the insane asylum. You guys all said we're gonna rent a motel. <laughs> So nobody warned me that I had to bring any of that stuff because you guys are like, yeah, we're going to rent a motel. We'll all split in. We'll all pitch into it. I'm thinking, okay, whatever. That's fine. So I packed everything but sleeping bags and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I made a, a bed out of three-ply. I made a pillow out of my three-ply uh, toilet yep. paper. Uh, and I think – did I make a, a sheet out of it? Like I, I don't know. I can't remember. I don't think you made a sheet. I remember seeing the bed and using the three-ply pillow. <laughs> And out of all of that night, we slept there. Not one person took a picture of the bed I made. Not I think one I have it on cam. I think I have it on video. I don't have a picture of it, but I think I have it on video. <laughs> we definitely need a three ply reunion. You and I have been out. Me and Rhythm Ryder have been out. It's been a long time since the three of us got together, so we have to make that happen. So we're going to wrap things up. We're at forty minutes, but what I want to do is you. Uh, you know, I have personally have you to thank for helping me navigate YouTube and figure out how to go from a photographer to videos and YouTube. And you were a huge part of, of me growing my YouTube channel. So to the young explorer out there or the young YouTuber or the, uh, the aspiring YouTuber, what advice do you have to give to someone who wants to start their own YouTube channel and grow up to be like Carlo Pelosa? Well, number one, you got to be yourself. You know what I mean? And it doesn't hurt to ask for help, right? Uh, cause there's a lot of people out there that ask me for help and I help them. Uh, and I can help. Like I, I've given you help, uh, how to grow. I've given rhythm rider help, mm -hmm. uh, D dog, uh, Ethan I've helped. You know what I mean? If, if people need help, reach out to people. Like I'm willing to help people to, to get them started, how their style, like I, I'm not going to tell you how your style to be. You guys just got to be yourself and then kind of wing how you want to be on camera and stuff like that. Like, uh, make you more, make yourself more unique. Totally, totally. Well, that's awesome way to wrap it up. And you did make a good segue. You said Ethan Mini. Guys, we are going to interview Ethan. We've already talked about it. My net, Possibly my next interview will be with Ethan Mini. We're going to talk to him, the king of the abandoned mansions and the fastest growing YouTube channel I've ever seen. Good friends of Carlo. You've been out with him. I've never actually met him or been out with him, which is crazy. I don't know if Rhythm Rider is going to be down for doing a podcast. I'm going to ask him. I don't think he's going to do it, but we're going to see if he wants to come by. We got um, Brent from Abandoned Urbex Canada. He's going to be here. We're going to talk to uh, Greg Abandoned from the Chasing Bandos podcast. He's actually the reason why we've got this podcast going. We're going to talk to him. But we're still here with Carlo Pelosa. Guys, all Carlo's links are going to be down below. UBC, any final thoughts, any final messages or words for the people? Always stay positive and keep living that dream. All right, guys, that was an awesome interview with Carlo Pelosa, the UBC. I hope you guys like that one. And I hope you're excited about many, many more interviews with other explorers, whether it's an OG explorer, someone who's been around a while, somebody new. I'm hoping to talk to all types of different explorers. But now what I want to do, guys, is I want to run a segment every week where I read a segment of this book called Access All Areas. This to me, guys, is the Bible for urban exploring. I've read this book three times and I'm about to read it for a fourth time. I'm gonna put a link down below for you guys to pick up this book. If you are serious about the hobby, I highly recommend the book. Or just Google or go on Amazon, Access All Areas by Ninjalicious. Ninjalicious was one of the pioneers of the hobby as we know it today. I didn't know him, but many of my friends did, but I do definitely agree with a lot of the things that he wrote about. So Jeff wrote this book in 2005 before he passed away. It's now 2023 and every single thing he writes in this book is still just as relevant and important to the hobby today. Things like oversharing, things like too many people in the hobby. He actually uh, invites more people to come into the hobby. Anyways, I'm going to read a little bit. Uh, from this book in every episode at the end of the episode just to show you guys how things were back in 2005 and how much they still apply now in 2023. So this is just going to be a couple of paragraphs and this is uh, page four and page five on chapter one and he just talks a lot about what is urban exploration and I think that's a great way to start on my first podcast for anyone who's new to the hobby or anyone who doesn't really know quite what urban exploration is. This is uh, a couple of paragraphs written by Jeff Chapman back in 2005. So what is and isn't urban exploration? Speaking broadly, 
Urban exploration consists of seeking out, visiting, and documenting interesting human-made spaces, most typically abandoned buildings, construction sites, active buildings, stormwater drains, utility tunnels, and transit tunnels, though lots of other possibilities on top of those basics. The areas explorers are interested in are usually neglected by or off limits to the general public. Though there are some exceptions to this, and it's certainly not the case that urban exploration always involves trespassing. Explorers flock to opportunities to see interesting buildings and tunnels that are temporarily open to the public, and most are quick to take advantage of chances to visit special areas with permission from friends and relatives. Explorers are also quick to take advantage of legal gray areas, such as touring stormwater drains, which in certain municipalities isn't technically illegal. So exploring isn't synonymous with recreational trespassing. So I'm gonna stop there, but here's what I wanna call out very specifically, because myself and a lot of my friends, we like to explore abandoned mansions. Now we use the term abandoned as a blanket term. Of course it's not abandoned, somebody owns it. But if there's a large mansion that's been empty and vacant for five years, 10 years, that nobody wants, that's open game for people like us. And I see a lot of people talking smack online uh, towards people like me, uh, Ethan, Big Banks. I mean, you name it. There's all kinds of guys in this hobby that explore uh, abandoned mansions. Rhythm Ryder does it. Mo Sargi does it. Carlo Pelozza does it. And again, I use the term abandoned very loosely. But what I want to call out is where he says, Urban exploration consists of seeking out, visiting, and documenting interesting human-made spaces. Interesting human-made spaces. Most typically abandoned buildings, construction sites, active buildings. So to the people that are on the internet and online chirping at people like us who like to explore these mansions, yes, mansions that are vacant are 100% a part of this hobby. Going into an abandoned mansion gives people like you and me the opportunity to see something interesting that we wouldn't normally get to see, unseen and off limits. I do 100% agree that exploring mansions, vacant, unwanted, unused, unable to sell, about to be demolished, whatever the case might be, are open game and I highly recommend you guys Continue exploring the abandoned mansions, whether it's abandoned or not. It's up to you what you want to explore. If somebody doesn't like the mansions, then they can go explore something else. Somebody doesn't like exploring something like a, a farmhouse, then they don't have to. It's up to you what you want to do. Don't let other people tell you what you can and can't and should or shouldn't explore just because that's their specific opinion. So that's my little rant for today, and that's my little bit of a paragraph from the book, Access All Areas, written in 2005 by Jeff Chapman, pioneer of the urban exploring scene as we know it today. Okay, guys, that's a wrap on the podcast. Very, very first episode. Again, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It's been fun for me. I'm gonna be interviewing so many people. Some of the things I got in the works so you guys know what's coming. Coming up soon, Ethan Mini, Rhythm Rider, Greg Abandoned, Boring with Angelo, Brent from Abandoned Urbex Canada, and I'm also working on some very special episodes. I'm currently in the talks with uh, some doctors. I'm trying to talk to some uh, medical professionals about um, respiratory issues and the stuff that we breathe, the mold, the black mold, the, the dead animals, the animal feces, the bird feces, all the stuff, the dust that's in the air. What is it doing to us in the short term and the long term? Also, I'm working on an episode with a police officer or a couple of police officers to talk about the legalities of urban exploring and not so much the legalities, but the actual consequences. Worst case scenario, best case scenario, what are we looking at legal wise when it comes to the law and trespassing recreationally? And this one's gonna be tough, guys. I'm reaching out to people whose houses I've explored that have contacted me and asked me to take my footage down. What does it feel like to find out that someone was walking through taking pictures of your family home? So lots of stuff going on in this podcast. I'm very excited about it. I hope you guys are too. So that wraps it up. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. Trying to get this podcast out everywhere that I possibly can. Uh, so always make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode of the Freaktography Podcast. 
I haven't quite named it yet. So right now it's called the Freak Photography Podcast. That's it, guys. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next week. Peace.